So hello everyone, we are sketching this today. Now this is a ink sketch in three steps. And often when we just set out with our pens, we might think, you know, oh, it's just really simple. Or we might even think there's so much to do. But if we apply a really simple structure, if we think about things in stages, suddenly we can actually progressively build up our sketch in a way which is interesting, fun and reliable so that we don't end up making big mistakes or never quite understanding where we're going. So with that in mind, we're going to do this sketch in three stages, which are going to be shapes, which are one of my favourite things, value, which is looking at hatching and how we separate out different layers, and then details, which is where we really get those punchy blacks and focus on the small things which add a lot of interest to our image. Today, I'm actually doing my second drawing of Eileen Donnan Castle. And again, apologies for the mispronunciation. And what we're going to be looking at is an ink only sketch. So if you've not seen it before, do check out my other video, which was all about watercolour then ink. So doing it kind of the wrong way around to produce a light and airy sketch of this interesting place. Um, I suggested in one of my um, community posts would you like to see an ink only sketch as well? And enough people, it only takes one really, but enough people said yes, that I thought, yeah, let's do it. Let's see what happens if we try an ink only sketch. So that's what we're doing. This is a Lamy All-Star pen, very similar to a um, Lamy Safari, which is a very popular pen. Uh, the main difference is it's got an aluminium body, but it writes, draws exactly the same as, as far as I've sort of been able to notice from my limited intelligence in these things. So I'm going to start uh, at the left edge of the castle and I'm going to be drawing a little wobbly line. And why am I drawing a wobbly line? Ridiculous, isn't it? It's clearly straight. Well, yeah, it's straight. I'll, I'll give you that. It is a straight line in reality, but it's got character and texture. And by starting off with a nice wobbly line, we're already getting that feel of a this kind of odd brickwork within our shape. So if we can, um, Whilst trying to work out, you know, are we drawing a rectangle, a triangle, how big is it, yada yada, all these things going through our head. If we can at all, just keep loose. Like, we we don't need to specifically be thinking too much about how we're keeping loose. Just these kind of random lines will do. So we could just be going like, we're going to draw a square, we're just going to make sure that every bit wobbles. And that will be one step along the road to a free sketching style. Um, and we can just keep going and finding these shapes. And so we move along. And there's our next shape coming up. This kind of turret, which is a cylinder and a triangle, really. I you know I got it a bit wrong. And the, the proportions, I have no doubt, are off and terrible. But uh, we'll make it work by the end. And then as I'm getting to the edge, we just lose a bit of detail here and there. And that's fine. And well, in fact, not just fine, that's the aim. So we want to uh, gradually lose that detail because we want the eye to be drawn over here, not over to the edge. And I'm just going to try and resolve this bigger shape, which is kind of like, got a rectangle here. And then we've got another sort of rectangly square underneath it. And we can just draw the whole square, even though it overlaps a bush, that's fine. In here, we've got a little... I don't even know what you call it. An arch, there you go. That's a good word for it. Then coming up here, we get back to the turret here, which is kind of a couple of stacked shapes, isn't it? And we've done it. So we've basically, we found this big rectangle. We split it into little rectangles. And we can find the smaller rectangles now as well, these, uh, these windows. Then going down here, we've got this little shape, which is a... Um, a stairway all the way down to the bottom. And we can start finding some of these other little shapes as well. And just by doing this, we've already built up a nice little outline of what's going on. Obviously, we've got a bit more work to do as we come to the back. So the nice thing about this castle is as complicated as it is, it's also a lot of big squares, isn't it? Really, like it's just a lot of big squares. So to get the actual essence of the, the building together very easy in a sense it's confusing but easy i hope that I hope that makes sense it's it's not easy and I, I keep missing missing bits out but that's that's because the tonally everything's very similar but but it's also 
not as hard as it looks. If we just actually take our time, uh, if I stop wittering on and, and talking nonsense, then we can find these simple shapes and, and map them in. There are shapes elsewhere as well. So we've got this bush is a simple shape here. Then at the front, we can just bring in this kind of strong line, which outlines this rectangle, this triangle, which is the lighter green going up. Then we got just going off onto other page, just a couple of little squashed circles, let's call them, which include going behind here. And then we can kind of edge round and bring in some of these little trees, which you can just turn into circles. And as we disappear into the background, we lose some of these shapes, don't we? And that's fine. We can just become really loose with our line work. So now we've built up this complicated scene just out of a few shapes. And that is, really, that is stage one done. We've done a couple of little details, but that's really, that's stage one done. So what's stage two? We talked about tonal value. So strictly off what we're doing is value. And value is the idea of going from the darkest part to the lightest part. Now if you squint, you'll see that there's some really light parts at the top on the left, the bottom on the left as well. And there's some really dark parts up here and here in the castle. So how are we going to achieve that kind of range in light and dark? Well, with a pen, a really lovely way of doing it is just simple hatching. So we can start with very gentle hatching. And we can basically go, you know what, not anywhere, but almost anywhere that's got a little bit of that kind of darkness to it. Let's start with a simple layer of hatching. So we then move around and we find those areas which are a little bit dark or very dark. And we have this hatching and we'll find the shape starts to emerge. And we're not at this point, we're almost not really being creative. We're just being observational. We're looking around. We've got our, our shapes already all mapped out. And now we're looking around and we're saying, well, which of these shapes is dark and which are light? And which are, you know, sometimes it's not the whole shape, is it? So here it's like, which half of the shape is dark or light? And we're not being too fussy about how dark at the moment, but we will be soon a bit more fussy about these kind of things. Now, what I'd encourage you to do is, well, to experiment, but not to be too worried about the hatching having to stay within the lines. Shadows don't tend to stay within lines. So see how I've crossed over in quite a few places. That joins things up. It's, it's absolutely fine to do, in, in my opinion. You can also find little shadows, so little shadows under areas to the sides of chimneys and that kind of thing and it's all right to invent shadows we might want there to be darkness under some of these windows just to make them feel 3d so that's fine let's let's invent some shadows but as long as we're doing it systematically that's the key what i'm going to do now is do the same approach but in everywhere else now in the foreground we've still got this this is still very much part of our focal point so i'm going to do a similar approach but because it's different I'm just going to change my angle of hatching. So I'm going to go horizontally now. So this bush we can see has got very much a dark middle and bottom and then it gets light around the outside. We've got some horizontal hatching now separating that out. And we can separate out these other areas with some with that simple horizontal hatching as well. And what that does is it immediately tells our eye one thing, different thing. Vertical things are on one kind of texture object, the horizontal things are on another. In the sea, perhaps just doing more natural kind of, effectively we're trying to like get these patterns of waves and we can use those to make the, the ideas of tone value sing through. So just increasing numbers of waves, especially into this area where we've got the blackest part of the sea. In the back, background you know we we have several approaches we could take what it is is it's very distant and this is a simple pen sketch so we just want to send it back we don't want much more than that or i don't want much more than that from my background saying that i've just noticed one thing which is that i didn't do any of this background so now 
We've got all of these shapes to work with. So what am I going to do? Well, we could leave it blank. That would send it back. Or we could do a different kind of hatching. Or we could try something a bit experimental. So let's do the last one. A little bit of fun to see if something a little bit different works. So what am I going to do? I'm going to leave it blank and I'm going to hatch in the sky, but I'm going to hatch in the sky with very broad vertical lines. So let's see what happens to the whole image when we've got this kind of broad vertical line separating out. And this is taking the sky and clearly delineating it from, well, from everything else. And some people use this technique and they have wonderful control over their, both their their patience and their hand and they do really fine fine smooth straight hatching that's um that's not me um i'm quite uh, quick and impatient so this is my version but we can start to see that it's kind of pulled apart these layers and we can start to think are there are other things that we want to do to pull it apart um and that's where we haven't finished yet with step two, because we still need to find those darkest darks, don't we? We've got one level here, we've got one level here, but actually there's way more than that. Now we're going to keep things simple, and we're going to have like a, three different levels of dark. So the next level of dark, we've got white, we've got level one, level two is just coming back over that. So just coming back over that and finding those, if we squint, we'll find those areas which are the next level up of dark. So we're ignoring the middle darknesses now. And there's quite a lot of it in this castle. There is quite a significant amount of it actually in this castle. So we've really got to go around and make sure we're getting these kind of next levels. And to keep it varied, to so keep some of these lighter areas there. So this, I'd call this roof one of those lighter areas. I'd call probably just add a tiny bit in here to to make a bit more variation as well. And maybe extend some of this other hatching down a bit as well. So that can be that can be done now. And then we've got the, the darkest darks. And that we're going to leave till the next stage. So the next stage is details. And why are we doing that? It's because the darkest darks are going to be bold lines and tiny things like windows and darkest shadows. So this is also going to help us to delineate the sky a bit more. What I'm going to do is a nice bold line. So I'm using the same fountain pen but pushing nice and hard. Now if you're using a fine liner you might want to change to bold fine liner to start getting some of these bolder lines. And these bolder lines will really separate things out far more. And just by getting us these nice illustrative bold lines Hopefully we'll start to think, see things really working, really coming apart much better. And remember, I'm calling this, this step details. That doesn't mean we lose the shapes. It doesn't mean that we lose the wobbly lines or the textures. So when we're making these bold lines, we're trying to, again, pull apart those interesting shapes and keep that wobbly, interesting, textured line. But also find some of these darkest shadows. So now we can come down these sides, like this chimney here, and this is where the darkest darks come in. The same in these windows. And don't worry about blocking them in completely because we want a bit of light reflecting off them to suggest a frame or to suggest literally the sky reflections in windows. But as we pull in these darkest darks, these points of real contrast, we'll start to find the real shape in the scene emerging. And we can invent a few. If we think somewhere's a bit bland, well, we can invent some windows. And if you saw my other version of this scene, you'll have seen I did the same thing there. I, this, this area just feels a bit blank in, in this style and and in, in, uh, in the photo even. Just you know, a lot of it comes from the, the texture rather than anything else. We come down here, darkest dark, darkest dark here, embolden this important shape. We can find these kind of little areas under and 
also you know we're thinking details remember so we're looking for little key bits of texture and things like that that we can really add in really evoke in our, in our sketch at this point okay so chimneys And then again, these really dark shadows on the chimneys, whether they're there or not, do you notice how I've made it consistent on all of these chimneys? He says, and I've noticed I've missed a couple, but on all these chimneys, I've tried at least to be consistent about providing a shadow on this side, because it then provides a sort of a, a shape which just fits its uniform throughout the whole image. And we can do again if we want we can invent room we can invent dark shadows underneath roofs and things like that again that's the same it just really helps to separate out two shapes which might otherwise compete with each other and there we are we're basically done with our little ink sketch so i'm just gonna pop my name there take a step back and look we could do more you can always do more there's one thing more I am going to do. So if we step back, what's a key shape which I haven't delineated properly? It's this lovely bush. And at this point we can start again thinking details and we can add that kind of textured approach in. Whereas before I'd just done it as a rough, could be a rock, couldn't it? It could be anything. But if we add this kind of leaf-like pattern to it, suddenly it's much more likely, not definitely, but much more likely to be a bush. We can use those same sort of marks to delineate some of these other shapes if we want as well, or we could leave it. And now I'm definitely done. So we've got this kind of surprisingly contrast rich and deep sketch just through three stages. Shapes, tone and value, which is basically hatching, and then details and those darkest, darkest darks. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope that's um, been a useful or interesting way to approach ink sketching perhaps um, sometimes it's, e it's handy to have a little bit extra structure to guide us down our, our sketches so hopefully that's what this has done that's certainly my desire um, if you enjoyed it do like and subscribe leave me a comment to let me know what you think uh, let me know any criticisms or praise I love praise of course but criticisms or things you would have done differently are also really interesting to hear um, and I really look forward to seeing what you sketch or joining me in the next video so thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos if you enjoy my content please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really really happy Thanks again.